All right, here we are, uh, Truth in Troubled Times, episode number two. Uh, really thankful and excited for the start we've had so far. And again, our intention and desire is to encourage the body of Christ with biblical truth within difficult times and Holy mm-hmm. Spirit given wisdom as well within the current crisis that we find ourselves in. Things are tough and difficult for sure, but the Lord is moving mm-hmm. and we have so much. Uh, to thank him for and to look to him, obviously, that he provides for his church. So this segment, I am delighted again today to reintroduce to so many of our church family, you will be well aware, uh, Dr. Crawford Loritz has been with us in person several times as a church. He is now joining me again from his home outside of Atlanta, Georgia. He is the senior pastor, again, of Fellowship Bible Church in Roswell, Georgia. He has been the author of numerous books, and he's been preaching the gospel. I read this, Crawford. I love it. Preaching the gospel across the world since 1972. Just um, for Mm -hmm. me, church family, you have to know uh, a huge influencer in Mm -hmm. my life, Mm -hmm. um, someone that God has Mm -hmm. used. And um, I'm just so blessed and thankful for an emphasis on character and God's word and leadership Mm -hmm. and get to share that with you in person here today. So, Godfrey, thanks for um, thanks for listening to all that. But I mean it. It's true. Oh my! And for joining us today. Thank you. Well, thank you, Robbie, for having me, man. It's always a joy to be with you. All right, great. So yeah. again, the idea is to encourage the church. Yeah. Got some questions yeah. I want to ask you today. These very yeah. unusual times we find ourselves in. Maybe we'll start off here, Prof, with just a, a personal update. How are you and your family doing right now in the midst of these again these quote, unprecedented times? Well, you know, the top line answer we're doing we're doing very well, and I, I'm grateful for that. I, uh, people are praying for us. Our kids remind me and and their and their mother that. Uh, we're in that uh, vulnerable age bracket, and so they're always uh, checking in on us. And right. but we're doing well. Our church is uh, on balance doing well. Um, you know, it's a new normal. People are loving one another, checking in with each other, and in uh, in that sense, this has uh, really been a blessing in in that regard. I mean, uh, so we're 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 doing we're doing well. You know, uh, there's some people who are struggling, obviously, in our church, but uh, as is the case in most, but. On balance, we're doing very well. Okay, good. So we're we're up here in obviously Toronto, Canada. Anything you want to let mm-hmm. us know about being in Atlanta, Georgia, even in the southern states there, for us to appreciate your context? Yeah, we're you know we're in the southeast, and and uh, Georgia has been hit pretty pretty hard. Obviously, not as bad as uh, say New York or, or or Washington State or you know the West Coast with California, but. You know, so our governor has still, uh, we're still involved in the shelter in place for another another couple of weeks or so. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, doing, we're doing okay. I mean, it's the southeastern part of the United States, and uh, people are getting antsy right now, wanting to hurry up and get back. The impact, obviously, economically um, on the southeast, the same as the rest of the country virtually. And so um, that's where a lot of the anxiety is. Yes, yes, and understood and felt really mm-hmm. across the world. It's just yeah. such incredible times. As pastors, we never, these were classes we never took in seminary, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've got a yeah. lot of ministry, and here we are. Um, I've always loved, like, loved your heart for leadership and character and just an instinct again. Um, as the Lord has led you, it's been so used. What What would you say is maybe in just inside, what is your personal urgent message to believers in Christ right now during this crisis? Well, I, you know, actually there's probably five bullet points underneath that. Um, and these are things that God's been saying to me. Number one is this rest in his care, rest in his care. And, uh, the only two options, the, we only have two options. One is either frustration and meltdown, right. Uh, or to really, believe in our hearts, the Bible that we've been talking about and listening to. And so we have a father that cares for us. So rest in his care. And I think secondly is to sit in his presence, mm. really to sit in his presence right now, uh, to make sure that we're prioritizing hearing the voice of God, spending time in his word, absorbing it, but also pouring our hearts out and believing prayer. 
Mm-hmm. And I think uh, thirdly is searching our hearts. Right now, this is a call to align our hearts with God. Uh, um, there's sin in our hearts and lives sometimes that's been accumulating that we need to address and take care of. There are idols that we've been holding on to that's come to the surface that we've got to get rid of, and we've got to make him first. So let's search our hearts. And I think fourthly, it's a love and care for others, uh, realizing that during a time of crisis, we've got to band together. We can't be petty, and we have to reach out and love and, and, and let people feel the love and care of the Lord Jesus. And I think finally, it, uh, for me, it's underscoring uh, doing what matters most, right? I mean, sharing the hope and the love of the Lord Jesus, focusing our lives on the gospel, because that matters. People are dying. People are dying. And so what really matters, and that is the saving power of Jesus Christ yeah. and making sure that we prioritize that. So those are the five things that just keep recycling through my head and my mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A great message to be able to send to your people and those who are around you. And again, I have found too that so many are looking to be led in the exact things oh, yeah. that you right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so important in this time. So God help us in that. Uh, as you touched on right there, for many right now, um, stress has never been greater. Um, mm-hmm. The stress is surrounding health issues. There's many people, as, as you kind of touched on a little bit, um, the fear of death itself. Um, the stress mm-hmm. practically jobs, unemployment, the stress of the future and kind of what's unknown uh, there too. How, how are you counseling your church? How are you counseling the people that you are engaged with in kind of faith over fear during this crisis? Well, it's a moment by moment uh, thing. You know, I preached a message here a couple of weeks ago um, entitled Resting in His Care from that great passage from uh, uh, Matthew 5. Um, um, no, it's, sorry, it's just this misquoted. That's Matthew 6, resting in his care. Uh, you know, and there, there are three words that we all have to keep coming back to. One is that we have a father, a father that cares for us, and that we have to choose not to be anxious, but to look to our heavenly father that really cares for us. He clothes the lily of the field and, and he feeds the birds. We're much more valuable. And God has many ways to meet our needs. Doesn't mean that we won't struggle some, but he has many ways of meeting our needs. The stock market, the world economy, and that kind of thing, God's provision is not conditioned by those circumstances. And I think secondly, uh, faith. You know, faith is a choice. Faith uh, 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 Faith is defiant. It means that if our father cares, and I've got to really believe that he cares. Mm-hmm. And that somehow or another, I don't know how it's going to work out, that he's going to do that. And then I think the other word is first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Making sure that we are prioritizing him. Yes. Now I want to loop back around and say that now is the time to experience the synergy of the body of Christ. To humble ourselves. Mm-hmm. Some of us are experiencing anxiety because we're too proud to ask for help. And God has provided that help through other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And now it's not the time to be proud, stubborn, and arrogant. We we have to reach out and let our needs be made known. And that might be the way in which God provides. And I think we need to rush toward one another as the body of Christ. Uh, We need to do that and not be isolated, but intentionally engage in asking people what their needs are. And if someone asks you and you have a need and you want to play the pride game, then God provided, but you walked away from that provision because you, you held on to your pride. Wow. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So uh, church family, did you just hear that? Cause that's, that, that's the word right now. That's so key is that humble ourselves enough to receive the help that we know that we need internally. So Robert, thank you for that word and for that direct mm-hmm. challenge. Mm-hmm. Again, so many people listening right now thinking that you just heard it, man, the Holy spirit just mm-hmm. spoke to you through that. And uh, you need to do something about that. Lord help us in that as well. I love that. Um, again, as the leader, um, I've known you to be Crawford. What is your leadership instinct reaction right now? What, what I'm trying to get at there too is what leadership qualities do you eagerly desire to see first and foremost in yourself and then in others in, uh, in times of crisis like this? 
Well, I think a, a tenacious obedience to God right now is uh, one of the things I think internally as leaders, we need to be listening to what God wants us to do and paying very close attention to that. And now is the time, number two, to be bold and courageous. Mm-hmm. We cannot be in a fetal position and allow fear to paralyze us. Yeah. Our people need to be led, and God raised us up for a time like this. Mm-hmm. And leadership shines brightest in the context of confusion. Mm-hmm. Leadership is all about direction. Leadership is all about hope giving. And I, by hope giving, I don't mean speculation, but it is taking the principles of God's word and stepping out on them and doing what needs to be done. But it's also about sacrifice. It's about others being others oriented and being a portrait of that desired destination. Now that sounds may sound like a bunch of empty platitudes, but I think practically the way that works itself out is that, that I am aggressively moving toward the need. I'm immersing myself in the need and get, putting my arms around people or you know, social distancing in a sense, putting my heart's arms around people right. and, and, and helping them walk through and figure out what can be done and trusting God in the process. And so I think what our people need right now is a sense of gospel hope, a sense of people who believe, there's not just motivational speak, but leaders who believe God's word and will step in and point to the truth of that word and realize that, that this is, you know, there's never been a situation in which God is wringing his hands or sipping maylocks or trying to figure out what is he going to do. God has a plan to get through this uh, and we're going to press into him and we're going to get on the other side of this. Mm-hmm. And that's, and then we have to work with folks to get them there. And so I think it's identifying with the people maintaining hope and moving them toward that destination. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. So needed and so good right now. Um, Death is one of the most powerful teachers um, ever. The Bible has much. In fact, I read this morning, Ecclesiastes seven. That's where I was in my readings among Mm -hmm. some other places. And that chapter is really on that topic of just understanding like there's the joy in birth, but there's the, understanding again of death and what it creates so wow. our world right now is faced with a sense of their mortality maybe again and like we say the world right now is is thinking about i mean it's really incredible times but so as much as there's so much suffering that we're aware of there's a seriousness all around us yes. um, but, but there's also good isn't there prophet right how would you in, in your perspective how do you see God using this? And you can talk about the individual situation. You can talk about national, even global, whatever you want to do there. How do you see God using this crisis for good? Well, I think it's putting us in perspective, right? I mean, I think he's using this to underscore how vulnerable we really are and how idiotic arrogance and pride really are. They don't mean anything right now. They, they mean nothing right now. Mm-hmm. That we're looking for answers. And uh, crisis really underscores uh, in a call. It underscores our need for dependence, and it is a call to dependence upon God. Mm-hmm. And that you know, this crisis says it screams loudly: "You were born to depend upon me. Mm-hmm. You were born to depend upon God." Mm-hmm. And that's what this crisis is really all about. You know, <laughs> there's some things worse than death. Disobedience is worse than death mm. because it sets you up for the second death. Mm. That you were born for a reason. You were born for a purpose. Mm. And God uses crises to underscore value, mm. to underscore direction. That life is more than about the accumulation of money, property, nice bricks put together in a fashionable community, a piece of metal that's driving down the road. This all seems so silly and stupid at a certain point. Mm-hmm. When, when people are dying and healthcare workers are doing all that they can to preserve life. Mm-hmm. And so you, you, this crisis is, a, is, is God's call back to him. Mm-hmm. And that there's a reason for your life. And what's, I, think, I think what's really sad to me is, is how Christians have been co-opted by the world system. Mm-hmm. And God is using this crisis to say, hey, look, I, I, I called you to be a light 
in a portrait of the desired destination in which this world needs to arrive. Mm -hmm. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And what crisis does is drives us to make the decision, am I going to be light? Am I going to be salty? Mm -hmm. Or I, am I going to be just like everybody else, just sort of like a, a, a better version than, than, than everybody else? Or am I going to be the alternative? And that's what this crisis is. It's done that in my own life. I mean, it's driven me to say, hey, hey, buddy, you, you made a bunch of assumptions about certain things. Why are you assuming that? Every day, every second is a gift from God. And at any minute, God can say, give me back my breath. Mm. And so I think the crisis is a realignment from heaven. Mm. To say, either you're going to be that destination or you're going to just really be mired in compromise. Wow. And so it speaks to the urgency of life and uh, the necessity of walking with them. And in those words, then, it becomes a, a, a wonderful potential gift from God, or it is yes. a gift. Yeah. Yeah. As much as it's, again, so difficult, we don't want to diminish that at all. But wow, um, man, may the Lord really give us the wisdom and help to see that and to, and to live that. This is, this is truth in trouble times for you right now. Coming to you right now, this is truth in the midst of trouble times. Thankful. Maybe we'll... Um, and with two kind of uh, short questions, but important questions, Crawford, I noticed, uh, I think last week you were on a prayer for revival. Um, yes. A call there as well. I love, love the heart for that as well. What's, what's your great prayer for the church then right now? Uh, my great prayer is that we will pursue repentance as a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, none of us, you know, we're not perfect. We don't live in heaven and board down here. That's the old line goes. I mean, uh, there's, there's stuff in all of us. And my great prayer for the church is that we will, we will be urgent about, uh, taking care of, uh, of our sinful failures, uh, that we will not be self-righteous, uh, that it's all of us and that we will embrace that and, uh, and that we'll experience the life of our savior. Yes. That Jesus will become real to us. Uh, that we will be absorbed in who he is and, and know the joy, the absolute joy of walking with him. Uh, that's my prayer. Amen. Amen. Do it, Lord. It's stirring me just even as you say it now, believing that this is what the Lord is doing. He is. Mm -hmm. He is working. And I believe he's going to use this in people's lives as they watch as well from the words that he's giving to you. Last question will be then, is there, is there one particular verse Crawford that has meant much to you um, during this crisis? Um, you know, there's a, there's a series of them. I mean, we go back to Isaiah. I was thinking about that early this morning, Isaiah. Um, boy. You caught me off guard here. Um, oh, no Isaiah, oh. <laughs> there's just a series of them. But, I, you know, Isaiah 41.10, right? Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's been one. But then, interestingly enough, the one that keeps ricocheting in my head is sort of a, a Loritz family verse, and that's Joshua one eight. Mm -hmm. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written therein. Then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. And that verse, that challenge God gave to Joshua was, was in the midst of uh, uncertainty, but a call to press into the uncertainty, and that was conquering the land. Well said. So those two verses, I would say. You asked for one, but I gave you two. That's good. That's good. So people receive that. Isaiah 41. Uh, Joshua 1, you can even look those up too, study and meditate. Again, as the psalmist says, really the, the reason for this, this segment, for the series is why should I fear in times of trouble? Amen. Yeah. Why should we fear Amen. in times of trouble? The Lord is on my side. I read this this morning too, and we'll end with this. My times are in the hand of my God. My times Amen. are in his hand. And we're like, thank you, Lord. Crawford, thank you, honestly. Thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. You'll be blessing our people and many beyond. May the church be encouraged. Our Amen. love for you, our love for you, you are scheduled to be with us in less than a year. And we're praying that that will be able to happen. Eh? <laughs> Who knows, yeah. right? Who knows? Yeah, right, Who right. knows? But our next men's conference, uh, yeah. may the Lord again allow that. So again, thank you, friend. We love you and we're encouraged by you. Thank you so much, Robbie.